So I am going to talk about uh, maliciously secure private set intersection. Uh, it's a joint work with Tobias. So. So specifically, I'm going to, we are going to realize this functionality of PSI where both the parties will uh, get the output of the protocol. So A have, uh, and B have this uh, sets SA and SB, and they, the functionality will give the intersection of this SA and SB, nothing else to both the parties. So we are in the settings where the set size are same or similar. You can pad it to make it same. And also, the, we are considering security against uh, malicious adversary. So why PSI? So as already uh, Avishai mentioned that this is a really practically motivated problem and it's app, uh, it comes in many real life uh, scenarios. For example, he uh, mentioned about this measuring at conversion rate, but there are also many other applications like private contract discovery, matchmaking, ride sharing, secure sketch, and many other things. Uh, and there actually many work has been done on this uh, two-party PSI primitive and specifically also on actively secure two-party PSI primitive, but uh, very few work considered the multi-party settings. Uh, so in this work, specifically like actively secure multi-party setting, so in this work we try to construct more efficient multi-party PSI protocol uh, which is secure against a malicious adversary. So. Uh, in this process, uh, we actually find uh, propose several uh, secure PSI protocol based on one primitive, which is called oblivious linear function evaluation. So specifically, we propose a two first propose a two PSI protocol with optimal communication complexity, like which is linear in the set size, and uh, the computational complexity is dominated by order of m log m field multiplication. Uh, and then we generalize this uh, two PSI protocol to multi-party PSI protocol with communication complexity of, of n square plus nmk, where n is the number of parties. So usually this n is much smaller than the set size m, so we kind of get almost linear communication complexity for actively secure multi-party PSI protocol. And uh, for the com computational complexity, is it is order of nm log m basic field multiplication. Uh, we also give a protocol for threshold multi-party PSI with same communication and compu uh, computational complexity. And uh, threshold multi-party PSI means uh, every party will learn the intersection uh, when the size of the intersection is greater than some threshold value. And uh, all these protocols are information theoretically secure in OLE hybrid model. And uh, so uh, we can say like in comparison with other MPSI protocol, our protocol kind of asymptotically beats all the existing maliciously secure uh, PSI protocols. And this is the first instantiation of a threshold multi-party PSI protocol which achieve active security and also almost linear communication over it. And uh, note that for the two-party threshold PSI protocol, it actually achieved the linear communication over it because this is kind of n minus uh, one whole square, so it's just uh, go away. So we find this result in OLE hybrid model. Now the question is, what is OLE? So this is a primitive called oblivious linear function evaluation, where uh, two part, it is a two-party primitive, where one party, the sender, holds this linear function ax plus b, and the other party holds this uh, evaluation point alpha. And at the end of the protocol, receiver will learn a alpha plus b, and sender will learn nothing. So there are many available construction, uh, passively secure, actively secure, etc. But for our specific uh, instantiation of the PSI protocol, we use a maliciously secure uh, OLE protocol from GNN17, which also achieves constant communication over it. Uh, now, how to do PSI from OLE? So from OLE, we define a functionality, restrictive functionality OLE plus, which actually uh, don't allow the receiver to input zero values uh, in the OLE functionality. And then from that, we define a functionality called oblivious polynomial addition. Yeah. So we define this OPA functionality, which essentially take two polynomial, randomize it, and add it. And from this OPA functionality, 
uh, we get this our two-party PSI protocol. And from this two-party PSI protocol, we get this multi-party PSI protocol. And uh, note that like, if you don't want active security, you can go from this OLE directly to this OPA functionality, and then to the PSI and multi-party PSI. So it's a nice background. So how to do this uh, to PSI from OLE? So the idea is simple. First, you encode your polyno uh, sets into polynomial such that each element of the set uh, represent uh, the root of the polynomial. So Alice encode is set uh, SA to PA of X in this way. Uh, Bob encode is set SB uh, to PB of X in this way. And then observe uh, this PA of X plus PB of X. The roots of this polynomial, from the roots of this polynomial, you can actually detect the intersection of two sets. Uh, but obviously, this is not secure because given this PA of X plus PB of X, one can remove this PB of X and learn the input of the other party uh, totally. So how to resolve this issue? So the simple thing what we can do is just randomize these uh, polynomials and add them. And uh, so and we call it the intersection polynomial, which is PA into R1 plus PB into R2. And uh, so if you see closely, Again, the roots of this polynomial actually give the intersection uh, of these two sets, SA and SB. So actually, this is already shown by uh, Kishnan and Song that uh, this ran uh, linear randomized uh, polynomial can be written as like GCD of PA, comma PB uh, into some uniform random polynomial of, uh, of the matching degree. And uh, the roots of this GCD of PA and PB already gives the intersection. And uh, this uh, uh, roots from this uniform polynomial actually gives no information about the other party's input. So we use this fact. So in this paper, uh, actually, they kind of encrypt this polynomial with additively homomorphic encryption. And then for maliciously se malicious security, they use uh, zero knowledge proof. Uh, so that's why using this heavy cryptographic machinery, they, are, uh, they lose the concrete efficiency of the protocol. So instead, what we use, we use this uh, primitive called OLE to do this randomized addition. Uh, so, so first, we, I define this functionality, which is called OPA, oblivious polynomial addition. In this functionality, uh, Alice gives input, uh, his input polynomial PA and some random polynomial R. And Bob gives his input polynomial PB. And at the end of the protocol, Bob will learn this PA plus PB into R. So in other terms, actually, Alice randomized Bob's input polynomial and add his polynomial to that. So how we can realize this functionality? We can realize it from uh, OLE in a simple manner. So, the, so note that the input of A and B is this PA and PB polynomial, which are of degree M. And now A choose some random polynomial R1 and R2 of degree M and uh, randomize his own polynomial PA with this R1. Well, so I call it P, which is equal to PA into R of 1. And uh, then Alice evaluate his polynomial P and this random polynomial R over some publicly known index like alpha 1 to alpha 2M. And uh, Bob will also do the same thing uh, with his input polynomial PB. And then they invoke like uh, they 2M uh, OLEs, where uh, Alice's input is P of alpha i and R2 of alpha i, and Bob's input is uh, PB of alpha i. Uh, so now from, from each invocation of this OLE, uh, Bob will learn this PB uh, into R2 plus P of, like evaluation of PB into R2 plus P. And you can see the degree of this PB, degree of this R2 is M. So the total degree of this polynomial is uh, 2M. So from 2M evolution points, uh, Bob can reconstruct the polynomial PA into R1 plus PB into R2. So that's the functionality. With order of M OLE calls, you can actually uh, randomize and add two polynomials. Uh, it's interesting to note that uh, it's already, this functionality itself already gives a one-sided two-PSI protocol uh, with passive security because uh, this randomized polynomial all already contains the encoding of the intersection. Uh, 
uh, so but uh, with passive security and uh, yeah this protocol is definitely information theoretic in FOLE hybrid model and the communication complexity is uh, like uh, order of m field elements even uh, if you Im implement this FOLE using that uh, OLE protocol from GNN17, because that has a constant communication over it, and it's coming back. Uh. Okay. Uh, ah, okay, so we are done with uh, this uh, OPA functionality. So from OLE, we uh, designed this OPA functionality with passive security. But what about active security? Uh, for active security, we have to use actively secure OLE box in place of passively secure OLE. But uh, that's not enough. We have to ensure that the receiver cannot input a zero value to all the OLE invocations, because otherwise the receiver can learn the po polynomial of the sender fully. So we define a functionality called OLE plus, which do that task for us, and which requires only two OLE calls. And, uh, and then at the end, we need a consistency check. And we are working with the polynomials. And whenever working with polynomials, that's nice, because you have the input and output polynomials. You pick a random point and check the consistency of the polynomial. So that's a simple check we do at the end of the protocol. And uh, so we are done with actively secure OPA protocol. Now, from this, uh, I'll show that how we achieve the actively secure two PSI when both the party will get the output. So the idea is that uh, Alice now choose uh, this random polynomial UA, which has some degree 2M, and uh, some random polynomial RA and RA prime with, uh, with uh, degree M. And uh, they, in, uh, Alice and Bob, invoke the F -O OPA functionality, where Alice input this UA and RA, and Bob input uh, is polynomial PB. As a result, the Bob will get this SB, which is PB into RA plus UA. Uh, this actually can be seen as a secret sharing of this randomized polynomial PB into RA, where A's share is minus UA and B's share is uh, SB. So. G uh, given that, like Bob will also do the same thing. He will choose some UB and RB and secret share the A's polynomial PA into RB. So once uh, they're done with that, Alice and Bob will de-randomize uh, de these things in a way and add them uh, in such a way such that uh, it will re result in this polynomial, which is uh, PA into some random polynomial plus PB into some random polynomial. And this is this already gives the intersection. So and then at the end uh, they will run the similar consistency check, like uh, evaluating the, their input and output polynomial in a random point and check uh, whether the relation holds. Now, if you see closely, like this part of this protocol, don't leak any information because this uh, PB into RA is uh, masked by a random uh, 2M degree polynomial UA. And this uh, PA into RB uh, is a random 2M degree polynomial UB. So the, up to this point, this is totally secure. But uh, a malicious adversary can try to de-randomize it in many different ways. Uh, but that leads to a wrong polynomial, because this UA and e UB are chosen totally in random. And uh, if there's a wrong polynomial, then the check will fail. And then uh, the, both the party can abort. So that's the whole protocol. And uh, the communication complexity is uh, order of m field elements, because this OPA can be implemented with order of m field elements. And for de-randomization, again, you have to transfer O of m uh, field elements. And computational complexity is dominated by order of n log m uh, field multiplication. Uh, because of the to detect the intersection, you have to do the multipoint evaluation of this, uh, this final polynomial, and that requires this fast modular transform, which requires this m log m uh, field multiplications. So we are done with this uh, two PSI. 
And now how we'll, I will show, I'll give the intuition that how we can get uh, this multi-party PSI uh, from this two PSI kind of uh, directly. So, so we use the star topology like uh, from, from a paper by Muthu and Karmit from 2017. So uh, here I take a toy example of three-party uh, case where three parties A, B, and C, they have their polynomial P, A, P, B, and P, C. Now, uh, C will say compute the intersection, and then C will learn two two-party protocol for with A and B to learn the intersection polynomial P A intersection C and P B intersection C. Now, if you see, like uh, he he defined this intersection polynomial uh, as P A intersection C plus P B intersection C, and uh, root of this polynomial already give A intersection B intersection C. Okay, so we are done. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, no, because uh, here the central party can learn the intermediate intersection. So we can learn intersection between A and C and the intersection between B and C, uh, which is not allowed in the ideal functionality. So we have to do something about that. So what we do is like we allow A and B to run a set of phase where they can talk to each other and uh, make some r random mask like RA and RB. After they are done with that, then uh, C start talking with A and B and run the two-party PSI protocol. And uh, where A use the random mask RA minus RB and B use the random mask minus RA minus RB. So at the end of the protocol, the C uh, will learn this, uh, the same polynomial masked with some value. And uh, from this uh, instance, he will learn some PB intersection uh, C learned with the negative of that same uh, polynomial. So now if we add both of them, he'll get the same intersection polynomial and thus can detect the intersection. Uh, but in this case, C cannot learn this uh, intermediate intersection due to this random masking. Uh, so yeah, that's a protocol, and uh, that can be definitely extended to multi-party case. And for malicious security, we have to uh, add a check, a similar check as the two-party PSI protocol at the end of the protocol. Uh, so in terms of communication, for the set of phase, uh, so you can A and B can actually exchange some PRG seeds and then extend it to uh, form this RA and RB. So it's like a, a, like n-square communication. And then uh, for this n instances of two PSI, there is like n m communication. So the total communication is like n-square plus uh, n m into k. And uh, computationally, uh, the central party have to do n two PSI instances. So this is dominated by n into m log m uh, multiplication. So that's it. That's the uh, multi-party PSI protocol. For the full protocol, you can uh, look into the paper. There are some minute details. So we are done with this multi-party PSI. Now I'll give an intuition about how we can get threshold multi-party PSI uh, from this multi-party PSI protocol. So let us consider a two-party one-sided PSI case, the first thing, the OPA protocol. So what actually, what's happening here? So here actually Bob learns this intersection polynomial, which is PA into R1 plus PB into R2. And Bob evaluates this intersection polynomial over its points and get these outputs. And whenever this BI belongs to the intersection, he'll get this white box, which is uh, zero output. And otherwise, he'll get some random evaluation, random points over the field. And from these zero outputs, uh, Bob can detect the intersection. So that's what's happening in all the protocols. Uh, now the idea is to make a threshold, use a different encoding. Use encoding such that uh, this uh, PA prime of alpha evaluates to 1 instead of 0 when this alpha uh, is in from the set. And uh, similarly, uh, Bob can encode his uh, set SB to PB prime. Uh, such that like when PV prime alpha is, is evaluated to 1 if alpha belongs to this SB. So if we do that and uh, we choose these random polynomials, not in a random way, but uh, in a certain way, such that this, uh, like this R1 prime and R2 prime of alpha gives a share of some LM robust secret sharing scheme, uh, which is like share of the values of S1 and S2, where we want to 
achieve this L threshold. So uh, now if we run the previous protocol like before, uh, Bob will learn this polynomial, which I'll call that P intersection prime, uh, which is PA prime into R1 prime plus PV prime into R2 prime. And uh, evaluation of this polynomial uh, now give him something like that, where this for the BIs, where the BI belongs to the intersection, uh, he will get share of this S1 plus S2 because this PA prime and PV prime evaluates to one for this encoding, and uh, this R1 prime alpha and R2 prime alpha gives him S1 plus S2. So he'll get one share of S1 plus S2. And uh, in the similar way, if we get like kind of L shares of S1 plus S2, from that L shares, he can re reconstruct this S1 plus S2 and thus can uh, detect the intersection. But uh, there is a problem uh, because now the other evolution points are not random because this R1 prime and R2 prime are not random polynomial of degree M. So that might leak some information about uh, the other party's input. So to, uh, to resolve that issue, uh, so one way to resolve that issue is to use uh, P intersection, like where you encode the polynomial like the previous MPSI protocol, and then uh, use the new encoding uh, and define this P intersection plus P intersection prime as the intersection polynomial. So if you do that, then Bob will evaluate this polynomial over his input. So he'll get something like that. So first he get these random points for the BI which belongs to the intersection. He'll get some zero, some random points, zero, and so on. And from this thing, he'll get something like this where uh, he gets the secret share of S1 plus S2 whenever BI belongs to the intersection. And otherwise, he will get something else. We don't care. Uh, but now, if you add those things, so this uh, this gives like uh, in the in the position where BI actually belongs to the intersection, you will get the share of S1 plus S2. And for the other case, the evolution points looks uh, random. So we have to take care that uh, in the protocol, we take care of the fact that uh, Bob ultimately will learn just this polynomial, not any like uh, or just not P intersection or P intersection prime separately. So if uh, so. And then we are done, because from here, Bob can compute this S1 plus S2 and then detect the intersection. And uh, that's the uh, and that can be definitely extended to multi-party case. I just give an example for two-party case. And uh, it has the same uh, communication and computational complexity as the multi-party PSI protocol. So with that, I'm done. So in summary, uh, we give a very simple protocol. Uh, for actively secure 2PSI in OLE hybrid model. We generalize it to uh, from 2PSI to MPSI. This is the most efficient M actively secure MPSI till date. And uh, this is also the first actively secure threshold MPSI protocol. So in the paper, we also give uh, a estimation of the concrete performance. We don't have an implementation, but we just estimate the communication over it of the paper. And uh, uh, so f uh, for the details, you can uh, look into that uh, paper. Actually, surprisingly, the performance, like, like at least communication over it of our 2PSI protocol is comparable. And in, in fact, in some cases, uh, it's better than the most efficient 2PSI, uh, actively secure 2PSI protocol. And uh, future direction, obviously, you can use the more optimization, which is already exist in the PSI literature, and then implement these OLE PSI protocols to see the actual concrete efficiency of these protocols. And uh, one of the important thing is that performance in offline and online paradigm. So all these things are in OLE hybrid model. So you can do uh, like in the offline phase, uh, you can do all the OLEs with random input. And then in the online phase, you can de-randomize this uh, OLEs to get the actual output. And that actually drastically uh, improved the communication overhead of the protocol. And uh, so that's something uh, to look into. And then uh, another question is, so we get a threshold uh, PSI protocol with linear communication complexity. So we can look. Uh, can we do better? So actually, we have a protocol with of threshold PSI with sublinear communication complexity, and so uh, maybe I'll going to explain that in crypto uh, this year. And so this is the print link, and thank you.
Uh, thank you, Satrajit, for the talk and for the expert handling of the glitch. Uh, any questions? Okay. All right, then let's uh, thank all the speakers in the session and thank uh, Lorenzo for expertly handling the glitch.